Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Code Tober Day 26. We are almost done. I think I've said that a lot of times. I'm just tired of creating these videos for you, but here I am. Anyway, in today's video, we are going to learn how to use data weave in any point code builder to maximize it. In case you are not familiar with the data weave extension for Visual Studio Code, you should go and check out some of my previous videos, but it pretty much makes your lives way easier because it kind of works like a data weave playground, but instead of being on the web, you can use it on your Visual Studio Code. However, this changes when we are using any point code builder because it doesn't work exactly the same, but it does work kind of the same as Studio. You know, like in Studio, you can run the preview and see the deal with code and such. So you can do a similar thing in any point code builder where you can create a payload and run the preview. And you can kind of like enable our preview like you do in the Visual Studio Code extension. So let's see how that works. And before I just run into the Millsoft project, let me show you a little bit of the business requirement that we are going to be doing today for the transformation. This is our payload. It has ID, first name, last name, birthday, email, address, and phone. And you can see there are some more um, keys inside address and phone. And this is our expected output. We are supposed to generate ID, name, age, email, country, and phone. And that is all. There are also some changes with the data types and such. So we will look into doing this transformation, but in Visual Studio Code instead of doing it in the DW Playground. Here, I'm going to add a transform message. And I already have a um, basic thing that I have here. But in case you don't have it, it's pretty much EE transform and then inside that EE message <laughs> and then inside that EE set payload. And this is the resource. So I'm going to change this to be just transform the DWL. So we are going to do this in an external file just because I like it better when everything is an external file. So here inside source main resources, let's create a new file. And this is going to be called transform.dwl, same as we had selected before. So there's that. And so we're basically just going to get the payload from the HTTP listener and we're going to output it and that's it. So now if we come here, this is our transform message. We can do, for example, output um, JSON. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Output application JSON, da da da, and payload. And that should be good enough. But if you feel better, we can also do the percentage DW 2.0, because that's the first line that always is there. So now it's going to tell you here that there is no reference to payload. Um, and it's going to give you some tips. So you can, for example, create a variable payload if you click on it it's literally going to create a variable payload. And that's not what we want. So if you go here at the top, it says define sample data. And that is where you want to click on. So now it's going to ask us the name of the sample. In this case, it's going to be payload.json, which is fine because we have a JSON. So now we have this payload.json file. Um, we can move it around so this looks more like the did with playground. So now let's go back. Let me change this whole, sorry, take this whole payload. So this is our JSON payload and we are just outputting the payload, same as we have here. Let me also copy this comment just so we have here the expected output. And then you can, yeah, you can select run mapping here at the top, but you can also select here. I am not 100% sure if this button comes from um, any point code builder or from the data web extension for VS Code. Um, if you don't have this button and you already have any point code builder installed, then it means this comes in the data web extension for VS Code. So just uh, look for the data web extension and install that one. It should be on a beta version, but it's totally fine. Anyway, so click on run preview right there. And this will literally output the uh, thing here at the left. 
just as in the deal with playground. Now, the only difference is that if I make some changes here, they're not going to be automatically put there until I click on the run thing. Um, but that is totally fine. I can just select enable or preview if I right click on the script and this will automatically work as the deal with playground. Again, if you are familiar with the data weave extension for VS Code, this is pretty much what it does. So that is perfect. All right, now let's quickly get into the changes. So pretty much we're going to create an object. This is going to have ID, which comes from ID. So payload.id. Um, then we are going to have a name. So name comes from payload.firstName. Um, plus plus payload dot l as uh, last name. <laughs> We're just gonna keep it simple for now. Then it wants us to count the age, and luckily for me, I already wrote wrote an article on that. So let me scroll down and take that. So it's pretty much this. So I have to import between from the w core periods. Um, then the I just have to use the between, so one between the other one. So let me go back here and say age, and then my first date is going to be current date. Um, so now between, and then payload.birth name. No, sorry, birth date. Okay um and as date and the should be a comma here all right so now it's gonna ask me what the hell is going on with between so i'm just gonna import this perfect so now we have this as a period and if we go back to the article we simply have to do the period dot months dot years and so on in this case i want the years so if i come here i simply have to put everything in parentheses and select years Perfect. I have a hundred years old. Whoops. Um, this was as daytime. No, I don't know what this is saying. But anyway, that's so right. We have what we wanted. Pretty straightforward. Then we got the email to be exactly the same. So payload.email. And then we want the country. In this case, um, we can simply do like the first two letters and put them in uppercase. So we can do upper and then payload dot address dot oops dot country and then extract from zero to one yes so we have the country perfect comma and finally the phone which is going to come from concatenating the country code and the number but just in, without including like the plus. So we're going to do payload.phone.country code. And then we're going to extract one to minus one. So it's only the one in this case. And to that, we are going to concatenate payload.phone.number. And there we have it. That is the expected thing, except that this is a number and we have a string. So now we need to change this whole thing as number. Perfect. This code is very straightforward. I am not checking for like if there is no country code, for example, what to do or if there's no last name. I'm just doing this really quickly so I can show you and demonstrate how this works. So that's pretty much it. So if we save this, we can run this application and check if it works. To run the application, you just have to go here and run it. Let me make this, or let me just close this. All righty, this is deployed. And I already have here my JSON request. So I'm just going to send it. And I correctly received the changes that I wanted. Oh. Well, I am missing here a space, <laughs> but I guess you know how to fix that. Anyway, that is pretty much, I can change this to whatever I want and this will be reflected in the response. 
because it is correctly connecting to the thing and it's doing the changes. Perfect. You know what? I can just send in a space for now. <laughs> Perfect. All right. That's all for this video then. That's all for day 26. I will see you tomorrow for day 27. Bye.